Hi, I'm Andy. Uh, this is uh, the third in our series of uh, surprising things that happen when you use JavaScript. It's on syntax. So, first thing to say about syntax, um, actually, before I start, JavaScript is great. Uh, I really love it. Uh, this is not against JavaScript. This is how to use JavaScript well. Or rather, how we can enjoy um, laughing at some people who did a really great job of designing a language and made a few mistakes and then someone went and standardized it. Okay, so um, today we're talking about syntax, um, which is my way of covering various topics, uh, which are, might be somewhat unrelated. Anyway, um, imagine we have a function called myfun. Uh, what it does is it writes the value of x to the console, which is that console.log line. Uh, and then it's an if statement, which is always executed because the um, the condition it's checking is just true. Um, and inside there, we declare a variable called x, set it to 4. And then the last line of the function is that we write the value of x to the console. Uh, when we type all that into the Fibro console, the response we get is undefined, which may not fill you with confidence, um, but it's OK. Uh, what happens when we call this function? So just have a look at that. What uh, what is going to be printed out when we call that function? Well, the answer is this. When we enter the function, x is undefined. No one's defined it yet. Um, we then go into the if and uh, declare x. Um, and then we come out of the if and we print the value of x. Uh, and the value that uh, is printed is 4. And then the last undefined that you see at the end there, that's actually just the return value of the function. Uh, uh, the function doesn't return anything, so firebug prints undefined. So what's surprising here, for those of us who are used to curly bracket languages, is that uh, even though we declared x inside uh, that if statement in, in between those curly brackets, um, it, it, still, it still is available for use in that uh, console.log uh, command at the end of the function. Um, so that's a bit of a WTF. So let's change the um, definition of our function a little bit. Let me show you what changed again. Step back, step forward. So now um, we, we, the condition for the if is false, so that code will never execute. Now obviously in your real code, um, presumably you'll have a real condition in there that um, depends on the value of some variables. Um, so my point here is that depending on the value of those variables, you will either enter or not enter this if. Um, and the line inside will either be executed or not executed, and that has an effect uh, in areas you might not expect. So, the question is, uh, what gets printed when you call this function? Any guesses? Undefined, undefined, undefined. Um, x is undefined when you enter. You don't go into the if and declare the variable, so x remains undefined in the last line of this function, and then the return value of the function is undefined. Um, my point is, uh, depending on the uh, this if, this variable is either declared or not declared in this function, and that that declaration, even though it happens inside uh, these curly brackets of the if statement, it affects the whole function. Uh, so this is a roundabout way of saying um, variable scope in JavaScript is function-wide. There is no such thing as a local scope um, within an if or a, a loop or anything else. Um, you can't make one yourself unless you make a function. Um, so anything you declare anywhere in the function uh, is available in the rest of the function, uh, but only after you've declared it. Um, and that can happen conditionally, as we've seen with this example. Um, so one way of combating this, preventing this from being confusing for us, um, is only to declare variables at the top of your function. Um, I don't like it because it feels like really old-fashioned C where you had to declare everything up, up front or even Pascal or something. Um, on the other hand, it, it does make it clear if you do that um, that the scope is function-wide, which is true wherever you declare it. Um, some people even suggest that you only have one var statement. One var statement can contain multiple variable definitions, so uh, um, some people say keep it simple, have one var statement for your per function and don't allow any others. I really hate that, uh, but maybe it's right. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Uh, another aspect of JavaScript syntax which might be surprising 
uh, is something uh, which uh, is sometimes called invocation patterns. So let's do a bit of setting up to um, uh, make this example work. So first of all, um, we're in the global scope here, but there's always something in JavaScript called this. Uh, and if you're in the global scope, this is the global object. So that would be your browser window or something like that. So let's set a property on on this to let's set it to ID. Or rather, let's set the ID property to global, and Firebug will respond global. Uh, now let's make an object. So this is the way in JavaScript you make, or one of the ways you make an object. Um, you have a curly bracket, and then you have um, name colon value, name a comma, name colon value, until you get to the end when you put a closing curly bracket. Uh, so this is an object which has two properties. Um, it has a property called ID, which is a string which says my obj, and it has a property called my meth, uh, and the value of that property is a function itself. So if you're not familiar with this, you probably have to look, stare at this for a while. But uh, basically. Um, uh, there's a thing in obj called myMeth which is itself a function uh, and if you look at the definition of that function it uses the word this and this WTF is around the word this so um, what happens when you call this function so we've put a property inside obj called myMeth and that property is a function so that means you can call it uh, and this is the way you call it Obj.myMeth bracket bracket doesn't take any arguments and it will return uh, the ID of this. And when we run it, you get back my obj, which makes sense if you think about it. The um, the obj object has a property ID, um, and that's what we're returning in this function. So we get back my obj. Okay. So let's take a reference to this method uh, and put it into a variable. So we're declaring a new variable called the method. Um, which points to uh, the, this function, which is called myMeth. Um, fair enough, we're allowed to do that. Um, what happens when we call this function? Right, it's the same function. Yeah, same result. You wish. So when you call the function in this way, you get a different response. So let me try and explain what's going on here. Um, several languages allow you to take a reference to a method. So if you think about how Python does this, you can have a line uh, like the second last line var the method equals obj.myMeth and in Python what you're actually doing is getting hold of an object which is not just a function, it's also um, uh, it also wraps up the fact that uh, it is a method on an instance of a class. Uh, in JavaScript that doesn't happen. So in JavaScript when you use this line var the method equals obj.myMeth what you're getting there is a function um, with no concept of what object it is a method of. Uh, so you get a function into the method and when you call that function the method bracket bracket um, it executes the code in it. The code in it is return this.id and where this comes from depends on how you call it. So when you call it as the method bracket bracket, this is the global object. When you call it as obj.myMeth bracket bracket, um, this is obj. And the rule is just, if you invoke it using a syntax, which is something dot something, then this becomes the first something. If you invoke it with a syntax which doesn't have a something dot something, then this becomes the global object. Scary annoying. There's a way to work around it. Uh, quite often what you wanted, what you meant, was um, a wrapper around the object and the function, uh, in some sense a method. Um, you can do it. Um, Dojo has this uh, thing called hitch, uh, which allows you to associate, sort of wrap up an object with a, with a function and, and uh, treat it as a, like a method. Um, you could also do that manually, um, and I'm sure the other frameworks let you do it too. Okay, so uh, let's move on to some more interesting syntax. Um, imagine you've got a function called myfun3. Uh, the definition of this function is just it's just one line. It returns an object, and that object has a property called a whose value is three. Right, so we declare it, we run it. What's the answer? The answer is what you'd expect. This is the way Firebug writes it, but basically it's an object which has one property a whose value is three. 
Okay, so let's look at almost the same function. I'm going to just flip back and forth a little bit. So there's my fun 3, and this is my fun 4. So if we have a look at what's changed, what's changed is the way we lay out our code. Um, and we've got a line break before the first curly bracket in the object definition. Okay, so let's define this function. Let's run this function. What is the return value of this function? How can it be different from the previous example? But it is. The answer, the return value, is undefined. So how on earth did this happen? So here's how it happened. And here is where, if you haven't seen this before, you are going to be you're going to learn that this is not the, lang not the languages you've been dealing with before. So the, uh, JavaScript has a feature which is supposed to make it easy to use called semicolon insertion. And I believe the rule that is used, and I'm sure someone will correct me on this, I believe the rule that is used is if the parser is happy when you hit a new line, we insert a semicolon. So the parser would be unhappy if you'd opened a bracket but you hadn't closed it yet, or something like that. But in this case, um, when you hit the end of the line, which just contains the word return, the parser is quite happy to believe that that is a statement. The, the return, on its own, um, is a full, a complete statement. So the parser thinks, right, I've got what, what could be a valid statement, I've hit a new line, so I will kind of greedily insert a semicolon. It, it will insert a semicolon whenever it feels comfortable with what it's seen so far. Um, so what that means is this function becomes return semicolon, open curly bracket, a colon, three, close curly bracket, semicolon. So when it's executing, it only executes the first line. It returns undefined immediately, hence the return value that we see. Uh, the rest of that function, just in case you're wondering, is perfectly valid JavaScript. Um, it's just an object literal that you do that nothing is done with. It, uh, you just make it and throw it away, except in this case you don't even make it because you return beforehand. So uh, be afraid. Um, how to work around this? How to avoid this being an issue? Um, uh, the first rule of thumb you really need to use is um, whenever you have a return statement which has stuff after it, make sure that stuff starts on the same line as the return statement. You absolutely must do that. Uh, what Crockford says um, is uh, you should just get used to the style where the curly brackets and the round brackets start on the same line as the thing before them. Um, I'm an old school C++ programmer and I hate that. I hate it, but maybe it's right for JavaScript. Um, oh, I hate it. Okay, and we'll save that for next time. That's it.